Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. So, Grandma, we are back in New York City, finally. It's so beautiful here and so happy to be back. Yeah, I feel like it's honestly a culture shock. Yeah, but a good culture shock where we're seeing people, they're smiling, everybody's eating outside. They're not smiling, it's New York City. Oh, no, they're smiling. They're smiling. Even behind the, the mass, and as of tomorrow, uh, uh, which is uh, Wednesday the 19th of May, we're going to have no masks in a lot of places. So that's really a big step. Yeah, I know you're definitely a little bit sick of it. But I also feel like it's confusing that some places require it, some places don't. And like... Well, you have to shop in Walmart or Costco. They don't, they're not requiring the masks. Oh, really? Yeah, the boutiques on Madison Avenue are all putting masks on. That's so interesting. Yeah. I wonder why. Well, I, I think they're following the CDC's policy, the large b- corporations. And uh, I think it's a step forward. They want to get out of this whole cycle. Yes. So I've been trying to be social since I've been here. It's been hard. You know, You're. I'm trying to go to parties and things when I hear about them. But you also don't really know when you get there who the group is going to be, if they've been safe, whatever. I'm pretty sure everyone I know has been vaccinated by this point, so I feel good about it. I think everybody's been vaccinated that you know. Well, I went to a party with one of my girlfriends, and there was like, you know, we were both single, and we were hoping that there were some good-looking guys there. And there were, but it was just kind of difficult to figure out how to just go up and start talking to somebody and i don't want to blame it as like oh it's so awkward after covid you're not used to socializing i don't even think that's it i feel like if there's not if you don't have a mutual friend to introduce you like why should a girl ever just walk up to a guy at a party well you can you can always drop your drink on it on his shirt you would do that oh excuse me i'm so sorry what's your name where do you live (laughs) you're watching too many romantic comedies i know i like that i like that idea I mean, you could, I feel like I've seen, you know, someone will be like, oh, you know, what drink are you ordering? That looks good. Or like some, you know, something random to just slide into the conversation. Because believe me, they want to meet other people as well, but they don't know how to do it. So it is a tricky thing, but I, uh, you know, I, I, it always is easier if somebody makes the intro. Yeah. That is true. That's true. But I also feel like when you're standing around and guys see that and they're not choosing to like whose job is it uh well i think it, in this day and age it's probably both of your jobs <laughs> it's it's whoever there is least shy but I, I you know what i i think um there are enough people that you know at the party and eventually if it's not this party it'll be another party somebody will introduce you to new people cuz i think that's very much after over a year of being in seclusion, people need to branch out and meet new people and and get new experiences and have new conversations. It's been such a, a, a down type of time and everybody is looking to be uplifted. What was your favorite thing of last week though? I think you went someplace in Brooklyn that you said was beautiful. Yes, I went to Dumbo House, which is you know one of the um, Soho House locations. It was really nice. You know, Dumbo is so cool like brooklyn you know you know it's like a basic you know manhattan girl when i'm like brooklyn is just so trendy but it really is (laughs) my mother ran out of brooklyn (laughs) they left brooklyn when the dodgers left they left yeah and now everybody wants to go back i know it's cool so i'd never been there and it was nice it was actually a really funny story this date situation um my hairdresser set me up on it i like went to Valerie Joseph, shout out to him. And I was like, Valerie, who you got for me? Like, who, who, which of your clients can you set me up with? And he mentioned some guy and I messaged him on Instagram and then we went on the state. And you had a good time. So that's great. Yeah. Um, It was a good time. And it was also funny because he's a pilot. And for the second date, he was like, do you want to go to Portland for French fries? (laughs) I would have done it. I know you're a chicken. You would never do it. You don't think, what if the plane went down? Oh, please but he has to have a, a co-pilot i wouldn't go just right. one person anymore i think that's scary but anyway maybe it was we'll a, take a, a poll of our listeners what they think i should do because i think that would be really fun but like worth i don't know it seems dangerous well i i, I think if you if he's if he's a good pilot i'm sure it's safe but True. i do think you need a second person in a plane yeah because what happens if he gets a cramp 
<laughs> and you can't, and take, can't over. take over. No, you no, cannot no. take over. You can't even drive a car. I know. So drive a plane would be really bad. But otherwise, it's been good. You know, I'm living in the apartment by myself. And I realized, like, you really don't need a guy to do anything except there was a bug that I had to kill. <laughs> that would have been nice to put that on somebody else. Like, I don't... That... But did you get him? I had to. It was either he, the little guy would run around my apartment <laughs> or he was dead. So I had to. But that and like, you know, hanging. Well, I had to hang a few paintings. You did that for me. Yeah, well, so. that, was, that was good. But that was a good, no, that was a joint effort. We had a measure. Yeah. We did a good job. I we stood had a back hammer. and watched you hammer. We had a hammer. That hammering was an issue. But uh, getting on and off the sofa for me was an issue to, to, reach, <laughs> to, to reach the nail. That was yeah, a little bit that tricky. that was not cute. I should have filmed I think I'm that. Too old. I think I'm too old to jump on a sofa with a hammer. <laughs> People are going to be like, why are you putting her to work? <laughs> Sorry. Well, this I is a job. Help. I have a job now. Well, this and like fixing around my apartment. Well, your apartment is perfect. Even the and your orchid plant is still alive. We thought we would kill that, but it's still alive you know, and thriving. I'm a responsible adult. <laughs> I can, I'm very maternal. I can take care of a plant. Good, good. I'm glad because the plant is looking at you. I know. And saying, feed me, feed me. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, also today you and I went to lunch. Oh, my gosh. We went to a place down on 18th Street. First of all, we couldn't find it. Uh, but then we finally found it. It was a vegan restaurant that I'm sure is very trendy. But I don't get vegan. First of all, they have nothing to eat there. I asked for it. <laughs> she was like, Kim, I can't find something on the I menu. I couldn't find something on the menu. It was so sad. I said, okay, I'll have. Actually, it turned out pretty interesting. I ended No, up you literally having- said, the waiter came over and you were like, I want an egg. I'm going <laughs> to have was an like, egg. It's the only what? thing on the menu I recognized. <laughs> I didn't know what those other things on the menu were. It was like all kinds of different vegetables that must be in a farmer's market that I haven't visited. But it, 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 I ordered something and he said, well, there's a very delicious... Um, wasn't tofu, but what kind of? It was, it was bean. chickpea. It, it was, was chickpea. A, uh, right, p- a pancake, and they make that like the bread. I said, okay, that sounds good. I'll have avocado. Well, with first that you're like, I egg. want an egg. I want. And they're an like, egg. what? And you're like, a fried egg. He was like, one fried egg. <laughs> He was this guy was like, you're the like only person in here who's ever just like questioned anything. Well, I think I was the oldest person that yeah. ever went to this restaurant. Yeah. You know, this was like beet juice. Like it was very like, and they, you oh, said they brought me a, 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 a nice coffee no. and it was so strong. Well, so she asked for, a, she, you were like, can I have a coffee? And they were like, we have cold brew. I didn't know what that was. I thought it was a beer. <laughs> no. Cold brew is basically like chilled. It's never been heated. It was like made as cold coffee and it has a higher coffee to water ratio than regular drip coffee. And it was very strong and bitter. So I then I knew not to ask for sugar because I know they don't have any sweetener or anything. But they did have natural sugar. So I then had to pour in four sugars because it was so strong I couldn't this drink This place was it. not this for was you. A bad thing for me. Any of the downtown restaurants we've had some issues for you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good downtown. I have to stick. I told you I have to stick uptown in the, uh, near my apartment so they at least understand me. Grandma well, what did you do this week? Well, I had a really nice week because I was walking around the city. I did more walking this week than I did the entire seven months in Palm Beach because in Palm Beach, all I do is get in the car and get out of a car. Here, I walked for miles and miles in the city, and it was wonderful. Everything is open. Um, what's the funniest thing is even stores that don't have food have tables and chairs set up outside that people, I guess, can just sit and chat. It's it's like a big community park. On uh, especially on the Upper East Side, and I'm sure it's the same downtown as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really neat. Went to a couple of good restaurants outdoors. Uh, the same pasta that I've been eating uh, in at uh, St. Ambrose in uh, PB is also on Madison Avenue, so I had some more of that because I was going into a withdrawal that I didn't have a, a spaghetti bolognese for about a week. You um, did at Serafina with uh, me. Oh, that's right. I did. But this was better, actually. The one at uh, St. Ambrose was better. Yeah. But uh, but they were both both good, come to think of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's funny because, like, when I come to the Upper East Side, where, you know, you are, I see all the Palm Beach people. Well, they're like, all living there. It's so there. fun. Everyone goes to the same 
few places. Well, what are we going to do? That's what's there. So, I mean, we, we, we try to encourage eating in our neighborhoods, especially. Yeah, but it's like not just the neighborhood. It's like a specific five places that yes. everyone well, that's recycles. True. That's true. But it's, uh, it's been fun. It's really been neat. And um, oh, and we also went to the Whitney. And we saw the Frick uh, collection, which is temporarily at the at the uh, Whitney on Madison, mm-hmm. which was interesting. What was your favorite picture there? Oh, I like the Monet oh. and Manet. Right. Yeah, that no, was- not Manet. Yes, I Manet think, was the old. Was, I know, but that's not what no, I. No, you like the Renoir. Yeah, I you the love Renoir. the Renoir with the the girl in the park with the two yes. children. Yeah, that was beautiful. I like the Rembrandt. I thought that was that. You'll really that's like uh, the most fabulous picture that was probably ever done. That and was the po- self portrait. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it was great, and and really for a museum that's so poorly lit. And that's always been a problem at that museum. They did a beautiful job on this show. So um, that was sort of fun. Yeah. Oh, speaking of shows, I went to Updating show, which was, if you guys remember, Harrison Foreman and Brandon Berman, who came on one of our episodes, how they have the show Updating. They're doing things in person again. because Oh, they were so cute. Yeah. So what was it? So basically, like, it was at this bar um, on the Lower East Side. And I went with one of my girlfriends and we got there at 7 p.m. I didn't realize the show started at 8.30. <laughs> oh, so a little s- early. Yeah. You were a little early. Yeah. So we sat a bit, you know, early. It was weird that the bar didn't have a liquor license. Oh. So they were serving soju. Do you know soju? No. What is that? It's a Korean, like, colorless distilled alcohol. It's almost like sake. Right. Well, that was fun. What do you do? I didn't get it. Oh. Because um, I was like, I don't really know if I want anything. But... It was interesting because all the cocktails was made was were made with soju. Oh, that's a little spin on on a cocktail. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, it was. I have to show you videos actually because. So we we were watching on stage. They had a girl and a guy blindfolded. The guy like took his shirt off at oh, one point. Why? Because he was like muscly. Oh, and okay. they wanted to see. Um, then the, when the girl took her blindfold yeah. off. Her makeup was running down her face and no one was saying anything. And, you know, I almost was like so close to just being like shouting out, like, fix your makeup. I didn't want to embarrass her, but it was so it was so embarrassing and horrible how the makeup was down her face. Well, that goes to show you that's another effect of a mask and a blindfold. We have to have a complete change of makeup. I, I've noticed that since I'm back. Your, in, your mask literally has a full face of makeup inside. I know. It. So did it work? Did anybody like each other? Yeah. So the original two end up picking each other. And then they were making out at the bar after. Oh, they had too much of that Korean drink. Of the soju. <laughs> Forget it. I mean, you know, when I walk into a bar, they also say soju. Well, that, that's a different <laughs> Jew. <laughs> dad jokes so let's get into our topic for this week um meeting the friends of someone you're seeing okay that's that's an interesting topic i feel like a lot of my friends are going through this right now because you know especially ones who maybe they've gone on 10 plus dates and they're like okay it's time like if we want to turn this into a relationship to meet each other's friends and like have that progression um do you have a idea of like when that should happen i don't know come on you know what I, double dating is a is a is a strange thing now well I it think. doesn't just have to be a double date it can also be you're bringing somebody to a party where your friends are you are um you know doing it there's like a group of you hang a small group of you hanging out and you're bringing the guy or girl along well, it doesn't I think just that's fine i think that's like uh, um uh, peer approval yeah and that's good um i i think first you have to uh, and that could be fun anyway because you want to if if you like the, the guy you're with or the girl you're with and and they have some nice friends it's always fun to get together and so you can go and do that and hang out with their friends and like still be like yeah i don't know if i want this person to be my boyfriend or girlfriend but i'll go and hang out with everybody or does it mean that you are gonna date i don't know if boyfriend and girlfriend at that point it it hasn't come up yet you're still you're still just dating and Mm -hmm. you're meeting friends i think when you go to the next stage after the the casual dates and the um just the uh 
dating with um, by yourselves, once you start adding other people in the mix, I think that becomes a little more tricky. So you have to see that everybody gets along and um, that there's some common interests uh, other than just maybe wanting to watch a movie together and share popcorn. If there really isn't a commonality, if you don't all like to watch the Nick game or watch a golf tournament, what's the point of having four people instead of just going out solo? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe people think it's... You know, fun to switch it up to be with a group and not just sit with one person. Well, that's true. That could be also. But I also you know, just think like it's nice to have, if you do like somebody, if your friends also think the person is nice, it always makes you feel good. Right. I don't think it's necessary because you're not dating your friends. You're 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 basically dating uh, the other person. Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's two sides of it, right? I think so, I've been in situations where I'm like, I really like this person, so I want my friends to meet them. Because like, right. naturally, like you would want... Um, like people you like and people you like to all hang out, you right. know? But then there's another side of it of I'm going to bring this person around and like, as you said, for approval, like... I also think this isn't college anymore. So I think what, once you're a little older, I think when you start introducing other people in the mix, it becomes a different um, dynamic. So it, it sometimes it can work. Sometimes you might want to even, if you have a sibling that you like to hang out with your sibling and their date, mm-hmm. perhaps, I mean, that could work too, or if, if uh, whatever. I, I, but I think first, you should go out with the person alone and see that you enjoy each other's company. Uh, if you need other people along to make the evening go by, uh, then, That's a horrible then I sign, think then yeah. you got to say that's the end of that relationship and that's really not a relationship it just was a casual meeting yeah i'm just thinking because like i'm thinking about my situations when these things have happened and they all really vary i mean one time i was seeing somebody you know we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend yet and we were like oh yeah we'll do something with your friends so we went and um to one of their apartments and we all made dinner together i thought it was a really fun night and you know like well that is fun and and it's a little different that is good yeah. but i don't think this it has was to a be while a ago diet. but like i'm saying though like halfway through like he was kind of like i'm not saying this is a test but like this is a test well then you know what if he needs approval by his friends then he's too insecure for you that could be i don't know if i took it as an insecure thing or it's like if your friends don't like the person like that's a bad sign and maybe they wouldn't go to the next step. No, it's up. first of all, Kimmy, I have to tell you the truth. What, who your friends are today might not be your friends in five years. Yeah. So I think and also your should, friends should like anyone that you bring right. home if, and if le- they make unless you they're happy. like toxic. Right. I, um, that's correct. Unless somebody is really verbally abusive to right. you in front of your friends, and right. they, they would be turned off. But I think most friends are supportive of each other and want uh, you to be happy. So I wouldn't take that too much of that kind of those kind of comments seriously. Mm-hmm. I know that like in my last few situationships, I have wanted to them to meet my friends, and I'm trying to break down like why exactly like. The last like three, like, I don't know. I maybe like you feel like it makes them real in a way when you're like, okay, or it's just like at a certain point, it's like you hang out a lot one on one. Now you, you're you introducing them to another aspect of your life. These that's are the fine. people that I hang out with. Yeah, well, I think that's great. I mean, you know, I think that's part of uh, of uh, moving forward and mm-hmm. and having fun with each other. And, and uh, you don't certainly don't have to always be by yourselves on a date. But um, I, I don't think the approval by friends is necessarily that important. Yeah. So then when do we think, though, like date five, date 10? Date, like, I don't think you can make rules on that. I think I think it could be two dates and these and, and somebody could say, oh, I've got a friend who's got a, uh, is going out with a girlfriend. Would you love to go out and double date? And in that case, why not? But have you ever as a couple invite a single friend along for dinner? Well, we always do because we have we have a lot of single friends now, uh, unfortunately. Like widows. So um, no, and, and divorced oh. uh, couples. I mean, you know, it, it tends to be um, as you get older, that happens and nobody cares. Mm-hmm. When I was dating in the Stone Ages, I think I did not double date 
until very far into a dating relationship. Unless it was in, you know, we're going back to college because don't forget I didn't date that much after college. I got married. But in college, if I, and I did have a series of different uh, guy friends, yeah, we went out with other people that, that we knew that were couples. But we didn't bring single ones along. That, that just Because what work. would be the point in bringing your single friend to your date Well, night? just not to leave them alone at night, I guess, to be nice. You know, a lot of times guys will say, oh, uh, Sam is by himself can he come along you know like they can stay home and order in by themselves yeah but in those days there was no ordering in so you had to go someplace so they could cook (laughs) not everyone in the world went out for dinner all right well uh, maybe sam wanted to go along uh whatever it doesn't usually fun doesn't usually work it doesn't usually work so i think the double dating has to be further along uh the line of your relationship and that's another thing too right like are there such thing as couple friends? Because a lot of the time I feel it's like, you know, one of the, let's say I'm, I have a boyfriend. It's like my boyfriend's friend and his girlfriend or one of my girlfriends and her boyfriend. It's not really like another couple friend, like that you two met as a couple. No, well, that would be very difficult to meet them as a couple. No, For that two people you, to meet two other people. That would be a, like, very, very difficult. Wait, I feel like there are couple friends like you're doing. Yes. Yeah, but no, but usually, you know, one of the partners and, and the other one is is their their date that they've picked someplace. You, right. You usually don't have them coming unless everybody is in the same small little community where you all know each other. That's a or, different thing. Right. Or like it's a you two met like two friends at a bar yeah and then and you, you all want coincidentally to you yeah. ended up with the same thing but that's that's a yeah i guess it's today. usually just like one person i think that friend. happens maybe when you're when you're in a high school or college situation or i don't think in real life it's pretty hard yeah okay so there's meeting the friends and then there's meeting the family that's a whole other story so you meet the friends before the family correct yeah, well, I don't know. You see, I, I now, I'm not hung up with introducing my uh, parents to to my dates I, because we used to have to they, uh, when we went out on a date, our parents had to meet them. They had to come to the door mm-hmm. like a human being, <laughs> shake hands <laughs> with my father, and say, "I'm going out with your daughter." You think if someone like drops me off and picks me up now, if they didn't come inside, that would be messed up? Well, in uh, in my time, it was unheard of. My my really? Father, oh no, my, there would be no. Why way. would they come and meet you if they're not your boyfriend? Because that was what you did. You didn't. You didn't go out with a gentleman, or uh, or a girl didn't go out with a fellow who who didn't meet your parents, it might, or were fixed up by somebody in a family. We we just you just didn't. There was no such thing in in those days of going to bars and picking up people. Right. I mean, it, it had to be for a formal introduction. And certainly, if you're going out with somebody uh, it's a, just a few crazy times, like even after college, if you were going with somebody in college and you came home on a vacation, the first thing that you would do was say, you know what? I want you to come over and meet my parents. You weren't looking to get married. You weren't looking to For that. some it reason, now it's very, very serious. Yeah, I know that. I, I'm not so sure that's so good because sometimes your parents see something in someone would say, listen, Listen, I, I don't think this guy is for you or this girl is for but you. But you think that early on your parents should be that involved? Like, Not d- involved. Date two, if someone was picking me up, I'd, I'd be no, like. No, I just think it's courteous. Yeah. I don't think I don't think it's involvement. I think it's just a matter of courtesy. But I think there's some judgment or stigma around it because like if I had said um, to one of my girlfriends, oh yeah, and then he came in and he met my parents and it was our second date, they would be like, oh my God, like, what did they say? What did, was how well, they I interact? Think that's, that's being overly sensitive and overreacting. I think it's a very normal thing for somebody to come into a house, especially if you're in a house and you're, and you're living with your parents for well, some most reason. most people now, well, I guess COVID just put everything on its exactly. head and a lot of people are living with their parents. Um, you wouldn't normally do it if you're both living in apartments. If we're both you, living, you know, in New York City in apartment it's like why there wouldn't really be a situation, correct. I guess, where the correct. parents were around. That's correct. But if you're in someone's home and they, and they clearly are coming to your house, yeah. it's very, what do you tell your parents when you're 20 some odd years old, sit in your room? I mean, th- th- this is not kindergarten. So I think, it, like you say, it depends. If you're in an apartment situation, everybody has their own place. Of course, you're not going to go have them meet your parents. Mm-hmm. But if you're living in a house and, and the, somebody's coming to pick you up or you, you're going to even... To, to the gentleman's house, you say, 
you know, and and he says, I'd love you to meet my sister, my brother, my I mother. Would have I no would have no problem, I don't think, meeting somebody's family in that situation. I think I would think it's a little odd that a guy would be like, let's say, like, of course not if you are seeing someone for a long time. But like, if it's like the, one of the first few dates and a guy is like, hey, my, my mom's making lunch and said, if you want to say hi. I would think it was weird. I don't think it's weird. I think you're being overly sensitive. I don't think so. I okay. think this is for some reason the way things well, are now. Then the mother knows that I like exist. exist. <laughs> and then like we have to, you know, and then she's going to say to. I think it's really like because we know she's going to say to him for the next few months. Where's Kim? Have you called Kim? Da, da, da. You know what I mean? Now your family's involved. All right. OK. I can see the point. I see the point. But I, however, if somebody does pick you up and your mother is standing, hanging out the of window, course. say, please, this is my mother. Please say hello. Of course. I think that is the polite thing to do. And like, let's say you do meet the family. You're at that stage, right? Okay. Is there anything specific that you would recommend or give tips to people on like how they act? What should they bring to their home? What topics or conversations are on or off limits? Well, I think this is also a different stage. You could be dating. Yeah, now we're talking further along. We're talking much further along. Now we're almost, You're invited we're over almost for dinner. moving in. No. We're almost moving in together. No, no, no. No, that's no, no, not that far along? No. What you've? I hope you've met the person's family before you're moving in together. Well, I don't know. A lot of people don't meet the, their families. Do I they? think they do. Oh, I think right. once you become official boyfriend and girlfriend, maybe even, okay. no, I think even before that. Well, I would hope so. I think you're right. But let's say they don't live in the same city. Sure. So, I mean, then you don't necessarily meet them. Yeah, I don't know. Most people I know, I think once they become exclusive or somewhat serious with someone, they've done something with the other people's okay. family. Well, then I think what... what and they're definitely not moving in together. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I, see, I don't know what the hesitancy, I think there's a lot of commitment issues in today's dating. Doesn't seem to me that people really commit to being with one person. They, they like play the field and, and too much. After a certain point, the field isn't so great. It's the same field. So you have to just the make- The field it. is just like dried out, <laughs> needs some serious farming. And it, needs some, it needs some new players in the field. But I, but I honestly think that when you go to meet a parent, or a, a, some a relative, uh, whatever it may be, a grandparent. You certainly bring a cookie, bring a bring a cake. Say, can I bring dessert? Bring some candy to the house. Um, if you know the person loves to read, I would even buy a book. If I was coming for dinner, that's so nice. Well, I think you have to be nice. I'd walk in and be like, "Bitches, it's Kim. I'm here. What up?" Then they would say goodbye. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Get out. You're not for my son. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, I, I guess like you bring a little something. You're polite. You talk like, do you, do you let them lead the conversation? Do you, I mean, I guess it depends on your personality type. Exactly. If, uh, if you're, if you're, I'm sure that they want to meet you just as much as they, as you want to meet them mm -hmm. and leave a good impression. So everybody's a little nervous always in the beginning. I'm sure it all gets, it's very good over food. So mm -hmm. usually yeah. everybody sits around a table and, and it gets a little more loosey goosey. So I, I wouldn't worry too much well, about so it. So meeting the family, does it have to mean anything? Well, well, yeah, I think it does mean something. It means that some, it's just more than a casual date. Mm -hmm. It's more than a casual date. But it shouldn't be overwhelmingly important because it's it's also if you like somebody, you want to see they, who their parents are. Mm -hmm. Because usually the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If their parents have a good relationship, you'll probably have a good relationship. Um, if the parents don't have a good relationship, it doesn't bode well usually for uh, a couple. Because people mimic what they see at home. Now, in some cases, they do the exact opposite. Yeah. So, you know, it can work both ways. But generally, um, you know, it's a nice thing to see who the parents are and make sure they're nice and that the siblings are all nice. Everybody's happy with each other. And, um, you know, life is not so easy. There are always issues in every family. So you got to take everybody with a little grain of salt and, and uh, hopefully have a nice evening or a lunch. Yeah, because I have some friends that like if they know that they're, let's say, you know, they're hanging out with a guy, they are hooking up with dating casually, whatever it is, and their mom will call them. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm at Sarah's house. Like, 
go i'll talk to you later and then the girl let's say my friend is sarah she'll be like oh my god his mom knows i exist he's told her about her because whatever does that mean anything or is it just like he probably said once before yeah i i I, I'm hanging out well, with these guys. I, I, I think it depends what you mean by hanging out. <laughs> I think if the boy has mentioned something to his mother that I'm seeing somebody, then naturally she's going to be curious. No, and but so that's a good sign. Then. I think it's a, yeah, well, it's a good sign that he's, that he is speaking well to it to his parents about uh, his date or her date. Um, but I wouldn't put too much stock in it. You're not, you yeah. know, you're not that far in the relationship. I've definitely dated guys who their moms knew about me and I didn't end up like actually dating them. So that that's correct. Yeah. And sometimes it's family friends that you're dating and you certainly know the, the, the parents. That doesn't mean that that relationship is going to go anywhere. Right. Like sometimes it's like a childhood friend. Correct. Or like, of course, correct. You, you've met the family before. That's a different situation. Right. Okay, we're going to go through some of our questions from our listeners this week. Um, Grandma, we have some interesting ones here. Okay, read them out, Kim. If a guy takes you on an expensive date, does that mean he wants a relationship? Absolutely not. Spending money means nothing about the relationship. It just means that he either likes to go to an expensive place or knows that you like it and wants to make you happy. Mm -hmm. But it absolutely has... No bearings on whether that relationship is going to go any place. I agree with you. I think maybe why someone may think that it would be correlated is if, for example, you know, it's more of a to do like they make a nice reservation. They're putting more money toward it versus like, hey, do you want to grab uh, Taco Bell? I, I, I think that uh, the effort of going out and making someone have a good time and laughing together is the most important thing. No matter. So, where how do you, you show go. effort if it's not a nice restaurant? You call up and say, "I want to see you, and I want to take a walk with you, and I want to hold hands, and I want to look I've, at the sky, so like, and I want to look at the the moon, yeah. and just do a nice thing with you together." If you both like to go mm-hmm. someplace expensive and nice and you can both afford it yeah. and or uh, your date can afford it, then by all means. But it isn't a prerequisite because that that means nothing. But if I had said to you, yeah, a guy, like he wants to hang out all the time and we take walks, you'd be like, you haven't gone out for dinner? Well, you know what? It depends. Well, I do think that's strange after after a thing, even if it's to catch but up. But I guess, right, it doesn't have to be an expensive it could dinner. Be a, it, could just... it could be eating Mexican food on the street. Right. But at least you're spending time with them. I mean, not everybody can do the same things. Yeah. But you have to also, I think when you're thinking about that, you have to think about what do you really like doing? And if your date doesn't really enjoy basically, doesn't have to be everything, but the same type of interests then what's the sense in carrying it on? It doesn't make any sense to me because you're never going to be happy. Okay, next one. Is the saying true, if he likes you, you'll know, and if he doesn't, you'll be confused? I don't get that. What do you mean by okay, that? Okay, so if if a guy likes you, you'll know. Right, well, that's... that's if he doesn't like you, you'll be confused. Meaning like, if you're like, I don't know, does he like me, does he not? That probably means he does not like you. Well, then he's probably not that into you and he's and he's sending out no signals to you. So like, if you're you not sure be confused. If someone, you sh- like, if you're not sure if some, if you're confused if someone likes you, does that mean they definitely don't like you? No, that means maybe he just hasn't put it out there or he's not sure whether Okay, so then that saying's not. not true in your opinion. I guess. I guess I never thought of that saying, but I guess. A lot of people have been saying it like on Instagram and stuff recently. Well, since I don't do Instagram, I have no idea. Like on social, I don't know. That's something that's just been going around like that people say, if he likes you, you'll know. If he doesn't, you'll be confused. I also disagree with that, but maybe I'm in denial. I think like it's not that black and white. Um, you might be confused because of a million other factors. Yeah, you might be confused because he got he, he got the wrong address someplace, or he, no, he went. No, but that's to- making excuses. I think if it's like you know, he only reaches out sometimes. He when you are together, it's great, but he calls you. Well, he's not, not that into you. So then you do agree with the saying. I guess I do. If somebody doesn't constantly make an effort, then the then the person isn't that into you. And what's the, there was a movie with that. He's just a book that was written about that. He's just not that into you. You have to get the message. Not everybody uh, feels the same way uh, about each other. And you get the message that he's he's not worth it. He's not putting in I the effort. I just don't think everyone like, shows 
interest in the same way. Like, well, but you have to have some interest. What are you supposed to have? The teles- a telepathic? Yeah. Through rays in the sky that uh, somebody is going to like you. Either they have to say, "I really enjoy being with you." Let's have, let's w- let's be together uh, a couple of days a week, or at least. But once what a if week? someone's like, "Yeah, I really like you," and then their actions are different? Then you're confused. Well, then I'm not sure he's worth bothering with. Yeah. Okay. Another saying that people were asking about, like, if someone says I'm not looking for a relationship, does that mean I'm not looking for a relationship with you? Or does sometimes genuinely someone's not looking for a relationship? Well, I think I think that could be both things. I think it's sometimes people are genuinely not in. They're just looking to have a nice evening with a nice person. Uh, they're not looking for. But then a relationship. why would you go? I mean, I feel like we've talked about this before. I just still don't get it. Why go on t- multiple dates with someone if you don't want a relationship? Because you well, just could want- you just have a friendship? Is that a possibility? But that's not a friendship if you're dating someone, paying well, for them, dating, dating having sex is with a them, diff- yeah. Whatever. But sometimes both people don't really want to be in a relationship. Right. So it's both just. I think it's, it's, just, you have to be on it's a page. mutual thing. I think this has to be a mutual thing. If both of you enjoy spending time together, there is nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, with no ulterior motive in the future. Uh, but if one person is looking for a relationship and the other person clearly is not, then I think it's only fair after a period of time to say, you know, I'm not ready for this relationship. You know, let's, let's visit this again, maybe in a couple of months or down the road. Yeah. Okay. Another thing, engagements and engagement announcements, you know, when someone will kind of plan around it, like they hire a photographer, they'll get their hair and makeup done before, like they know it's coming. And then afterwards, like they'll have something with their family and their friends after Um, nice or too much. Well, that's what we used to do. I don't know what they no, do. No, people do that now. Oh, they go, you know, they'll have a whole party after their friends and family will be waiting. Like, but we had, we would get engaged, and our and and usually the fellow would tell the parents, mm-hmm. and they would meet afterwards, which was very nice, so yeah. that everybody would be part of the celebration. But we were also much younger. I don't know as you get older if people do that anymore. I, I don't people know. People are doing it, I th- and they make sure they will be posting it on Instagram. Well, that's the whole difference. Yeah, so I'm sure that's part of the whole thing. Yeah, I think they like hire a photographer and stuff to like show everybody the whole thing. And like a lot of people have the mindset of like this should be an intimate moment. I, like, I think it should be an intimate why moment. Why is it all I don't over? mind having it an intimate moment and then sharing it with the parents. But I don't think the entire world has to know that you got engaged and where you got engaged and how big your ring is. And yeah. That that I just think is it's more so information funny than you need. Because now, you know, I'm getting to the age where I don't know that many people getting engaged, but there's a few like friends of friends. And the first thing everybody is always like, let's see a picture of the ring. And like, like they usually have posted it on Instagram well, that's or very, sent that's, it to each other. That always. That hasn't changed. No. Every girl always likes to show it off, no matter how big or how small. Wait, that- we need a little education here, actually. By we, I mean I, but I feel like all of our listeners. What um size wedding rings are like out there and like options for people? Well, that that you could buy something that's that's $20. What's the norm for somebody who has like a very comfortable job? You know what? That's between the the man and the woman. But like two carrots, three carrots, yeah, four I carrots. Yeah, I think something in that range. But the thing is, it it really depends on the on the person. I mean, there's some men uh, uh, that are able to afford a large ring, and and they're no, older. Like Don't forget, ring. it's older. You're older now. When I got engaged, I had a three carat ring, but my husband was 23 years Wait, old, no, I think and that's that was nice. very nice. I think that's. I think people are still doing three carat. Well, that was, and it was very nice, and it was beautiful, and uh, and it was, you know, I eventually traded up. Yeah, <laughs> that's what a lot of people, I guess. But I, for many, many years, that was on my finger, and it was very, very lovely. What uh, would be like? You would be shocked to hear if somebody had like a ten carat ring. Well, that that's got to be. Or that's no, way too that's, much. Okay, that's so too much for a like young a, girl. For a young girl, unless it's Paris Hilton, right? So what about like a six carat ring? Well, that's awfully big too. I don't. I don't I even think, know what these things look I like. Think, I'm just I, well, throwing out numbers. Just look at it, it. Six carats would be the size of a grape. I don't think you that's want a huge. grape on your finger. That's huge. <laughs> I don't think that's so, necessary. So, 
I like think four my, and five is still very big. Yeah, and that's that's a nice size though. Four carat is a nice size ring. But I think it should only depend I'm on I'm looking what down at my afford. hand as we're having this conversation. You can only I don't know. You can only look at that. You are very you're very small, so you could get a smaller ring. You don't need No, to don't tell anybody that. <laughs> Good things come in small packages. Yep. One of grandma's favorite lines. Okay. Someone else wrote in about this whole entire situation that a guy that they have gone on a few dates with have not reached out to do another date specifically, but they've reached out to initiate conversations. Hey, how are you doing today? Whatever it may be, but have not specifically been like, do you want to do dinner again? Like what? Jimmy, this is the same situation. He's not that into you. It's the same. Right, if you're confused. These, these, yeah, exactly. This is, these, the girls basically, I, I think the girls today are in such a bad situation because they really, they've sent out the wrong signals to the fellows that, oh, it's all right just to be casual and to text and to, to banter. And, and there's no such thing as making a commitment. So it's, again, the thing, fear of commitment, fear of calling and making an actual date. I mean, a date is a date. It's not a banter. It's not a text. It's not a phone call. Call up. This guy should be either calling her. Let's go out for dinner. Let's go to a movie. Let's do something. Let's play golf. Let's go swimming. It has to be a one-on-one. It cannot be a, a just what's, how's your day going? It, that makes no sense to me. If he initiated the conversation, why can't she just say, hey, do you want to do something this week? Well, I think you, you're right. I think she has to uh, she has to say back to him, uh, glad glad to hear from you. Why don't we have a cup of coffee? Because maybe like he doesn't want to if he's not asking. So why would she ask? Well, if he must have some interest if he's texting her. Right. That's so, what, what what confuses us though. Well, it can't. It's it's so either you. So you have to put it out there and say I but got he, your text. I'm let's sure ha- in this let's is, have coffee yeah. or let's have a drink. If he says no, don't you think these it. boys know that the girls are interested? I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows anything anymore. I think everybody's so involved in their own worlds and not thinking about the, anybody else that they really don't think maybe. And I think the guys are socially retarded. <laughs> I, I think they they need a refresher course in dating. Is it okay to order a drink while you're waiting for your date if they're running more than 20 minutes late? Well, I think it's probably all right. But if they're running, and let, did he text and say he's coming? I don't. This is the question I received. I don't know the situation. Oh, well, if he didn't text that he's running late, I, I would almost get up and leave. Yeah, well, I mean, what's the I, cutoff? What's the cutoff where you say the guy isn't coming at all? Well, I don't think that happens now with texting. Right. Like maybe back in your day when it was like you agree to meet somewhere, you show up and then they don't show up, you might be getting stood up. Right. I think no one would go. Like I always before a date will be like, hi, like I'm about to leave in five minutes or like I'm on my way well, to make good. sure that they're like also going. Well, not only <laughs> that, you've forget. got New York traffic. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's a whole big difference. You could say you're leaving and 20 minutes later you could be going to five blocks. So, you know, the, the, the plus thing about texting is you can give somebody an update. And I do think if somebody says they're running late, there is nothing wrong with either ordering a Pellegrino or ordering a glass of white wine and nursing it. I'm a big believer in not drinking too much on a first date. So yeah. I would almost order um, some form of um, club soda. Right. So not if they're like five minutes late, obviously, but no, more no. than 20. Yeah. And if somebody probably. says they're running late, uh, but I'll be there. So order a, order a, uh, a white wine spritzer and nurse it. Yeah. Also, I always never know what drink to order. Like, do you try one of the fancy cocktails? Do you get a glass of wine? Do you get a cocktail you know you like, like a martini? I would be very careful if it's a first date because you don't want to be drunk on a first date. And a martini, if you drink it, it can go right to your head and then you don't know what you're saying. You're Not like a crazy one martini. person. Absolutely. One martini, martini, you could be drooling on the floor. I think no. the safest drink... People to, like judge you if you don't get anything. That's too bad. Let the, if they're judging you, then you don't want those people. If True. somebody's going to judge you on the amount of alcohol you drink, True. then you don't need to go out with that person. But I would, I would always stick with a glass of Sansei or a glass of white wine or a rosé in the summer and nurse it. Put some ice in it. There's no reason to be at all intoxicated or have two or three drinks on a first I agree. Day. Actually, when I was, I was playing a golf with a group of people the other day and everybody was talking about dating and this 
guy was like i went on a date the other night and i spent 300 dollars. it wasn't food they were just getting drinks they had six drinks each well well maybe that's their lifestyle and he evidently likes to do it that would be and then the same guy said that he would make the girl split the bill after the second or third date i was like this is why you're single (laughs) <laughs> and he shouldn't have six drinks a piece yeah and uh, yeah uh, like after two three drinks if you still want to hang out with the person like just see them again another time or like go for a walk like i don't know it just it just that just rattles me that like people are like getting fucked up on, on a date why are you doing that well, because they try well i think some people need a high from alcohol because they and, can't have and, a conversation uh, well they can't no they really have they have social anxiety and they need drink to make them have some kind of conversation and usually when you drink more than one or two drinks you don't know what you're saying anyway so it doesn't really matter <laughs> that's true okay and moving on to our 50s movie of the week this week it is roman holiday with Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck, who were absolutely the most wonderful actors of uh, of the time, set uh, against Rome's beautiful scenery. Nineteen fifty three, right? These stark chorus lovers were just—it was just a beautiful fantasy, and is a must see for people who love uh, beautiful films. Yeah, and who love to like feel the romance and maybe shed a tear or two. Okay, that's a wrap for another week of Excuse My Grandma. You know, you can follow us on Instagram at Excuse My Grandma. Please give us five stars on any podcast platform that you're listening to. Leave us a review. And remember, it's free. Have a good week. <laughs>